I was answering some comments on my channel the other day when I came across a question that resonated with me because it happened to a friend of mine years earlier. He got his credit score to a good spot while attending college as a full-time student, which isn't very hard to do if you know how to manipulate your score with an effective credit activity and payment scheme. Upon graduating, he received a nice paying job and uprooted his life from his hometown college as he entered the job world in an entirely new state. However, in the middle of the move, he forgot about a few payments to a couple of his credit accounts. After just two years of starting his job, he managed to save enough to buy his first home. Let's see how those missed payments affected his home buying experience and what options he has to improve his situation. I'm Cap, and welcome to Screaming Lincoln's Consumer Credit Series. Say hello to my friend Mike. At this point, he's graduated college two years prior and has been saving up for his first home. He's now found a home he wants to buy and has enough saved. Upon applying for a mortgage, he's hit with some unpleasant information about his credit history. Because with all the stress of uprooting from his longtime hometown to his new location, he forgot about a couple payments for his credit cards and student loans. Now two years later, he's realizing the implications of his negligence because while his score is certainly above average, it still isn't good enough to earn the best rates. Let's take a closer look at his situation and how those missed payments will affect his mortgage schedule. Here's a table with Mike's hopeful expectations on how his mortgage payment schedule will pan out. Take note of the interest rate Mike was expecting to get and how much that translates to real money in interest costs. Because of those missed payments, he found out that his interest rate increased by just 0.75%, which increased his monthly payment by $89 over the entire 30-year term. To put this in perspective, Mike will pay out over $194,000 in interest under this less favorable rate. Whereas if he didn't have any missed payments, his total interest paid would be under $162,000. Now that we've seen the differences in payment amounts for the same home loan, let's see what Mike can do to get a better interest rate. One option is to submit a forgiveness letter to each lender. A forgiveness letter is where you're asking a lender to remove a missed payment from your credit history. Many scripts are available online, but to put it simply, the format goes something like this. You stress that you've been a longtime customer that uses their credit card constantly with timely payments and will continue to do so, but came upon some isolated, unexpected events a while back. You can supply additional documentation like updated utility statements, which will confirm an address change like in Mike's case. Since those isolated events, you've demonstrated on-time payments and consistent responsible card use and are asking if the lender would kindly remove the derogatory mark from your credit history. If your relationship with the lender goes beyond a single credit account, you can play the loyalty card across those other accounts you may have with the lender. In Mike's case, he also has a checking account and another credit account with the same lender. You can take this loyalty play one step further by providing additional information showing how responsible you are as a customer. Customer responsibility translates to profitability in the lender's eyes. This can be as simple as showing consistent positive cash flow every month that has grown into a healthy amount like in Mike's case for his down payment on his new home. Or you can stress how much the credit cards you have from the lender get frequently used and paid every month from the same checking account you have your direct deposits made with that same lender. 
The loyalty card has a lot of play when your relationship with the lender is strengthened with many accounts. Don't be afraid to leverage it when necessary and mention the possibility that you may move all this loyalty to another lender that may already be providing that killer rate on a mortgage you're looking for, like in Mike's case. I'm using my friend Mike and his pending mortgage as an example, but this can be applied to any product a lender offers with the right narrative. As a general rule, home loans are heavily vetted and are usually more rigid in terms, but if it works, all you had to do was ask. I've had others tell me of their experience laying out their loyalty narrative and found it works best with smaller lenders like regional banks and credit unions. For consumers with little to no credit history, this can be a helpful tool to get their credit history on track so when the day comes for a big purchase, they've already done the work and will be ready. Using forgiveness letters to get derogatory marks like missed payments removed works more favorably when the loyalty angle is used. Another option is to dispute the missed payment, but this can be difficult with most lenders, especially since Mike really was late with his payment. There are some consumers that have luck getting derogatory marks removed by disputing them with the consumer credit reporting agencies. This definitely isn't the normal outcome because it usually involves a lot of back and forth with all three bureaus and gets quite time consuming considering most of the communication must be done by regular mail. Also, if disputing a missed payment, you can't use the first option of a forgiveness letter. You simply cannot ask a lender to forgive a debt you are just disputing with them. So it's one or the other when it comes to forgiveness or disputes. Another option is to make your case in writing with the mortgage lender directly. This would be my option of choice after trying the forgiveness option because disputes can take way too long. With all three options, don't expect an answer overnight when it comes to home loans. Many of the larger lenders won't be as understanding when asking for reconsideration on changing their mortgage terms after their underwriting process is completed. However, many smaller banks and credit unions may be more susceptible to changing their terms provided you've done your due diligence in laying out your case in writing. Let's get back to my friend Mike and see how this applies to him. Mike can ask his employer to draft a letter that confirms his hire date along with the location of his new office he had to move to. Mike can also provide utility statements confirming his address changed as he moved from his hometown to his new job during the period the missed payments were incurred. Mike can stress these periods in his credit history's payment timeline and highlight how they were isolated occurrences and offer to submit his bank information for automatic monthly withdrawals for the mortgage payment, which will assure the lender he won't miss any payments. Because Mike is an avid saver, he can reiterate his consistent, positive monthly cash flow with bank statements to alleviate any worries the lender may have with him not having enough money to make payments. One last tool Mike can use is to get a letter of recommendation from his previous landlord and even his current employer, which can vouch for his character and consistency. All this extra work is not a guarantee for the best rate. Instead, it's meant to open the dialogue between the borrower and lender because there's often friction when derogatory marks are involved in the underwriting process. Many mortgage risk models vet an applicant's overall situation way more thoroughly than a risk model a credit card uses. Because of the huge amount of money and risk involved, Mortgage lenders look at everything about the borrower. Why not use this information with your own due diligence to redirect the credit narrative the mortgage lender's risk model has inferred about you with your own narrative 
as shown earlier. Again, it's not foolproof, and in Mike's case, he may have to shop around to find a smaller bank or credit union that's more understanding to his situation. Every lender uses a specific risk model, and they can vary from one lender to the next based on whatever factor a lender values most. This is why I stress the importance of opening accounts with various lenders and not monogamizing your credit relationship to just one or two lenders. As mentioned earlier, this last option is meant to start the reconsideration process with a mortgage lender and is not a plan for guaranteed success. But doing the work in translating your situation like Mike did with his in writing so the lender can have a written record of your credit journey may shift the narrative in your favor and result in better terms and save you thousands in interest. All this headache because life got a little overwhelming a while ago. And while you're definitely okay now, the impact of having missed payments appear in a credit history are long lasting. The goal of this video was to indicate how damaging missed payments can be along with what can be done to mitigate their effect when you really need a more favorable decision. For more information on other factors that affect credit scores, click the end screen coming up in a moment. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments anytime. What are you waiting for? Hit it, Steve.